Hi, I'm Gina Sandoval. I'm a sales leader here at Allbound. And today we're going to talk about sales trends that you need to know in 2023. Now, in the past six years or so that I've been uh, working in B2B sales, I've seen a lot of things change over the course of how our buyers buy, how sellers sell, and everything in between. So one of the things that we obviously want to talk about today is some of the economic uncertainty that is happening. I mean, AI is definitely changing the game. Um, there's lots of pros and cons to it. I know everyone feels either maybe one way or another way about it, but regardless of how you feel about it, it is definitely changing how our buyers buy. And as sellers, we really need to do our best to adapt to the changes in this space and really think about how the de demographics of our buyers are shifting and really the way that they buy. So in terms of buying committees, I mean, when I first started, there were definitely times where we closed deals where maybe one person or maybe two people were involved throughout the entire sales process. On average now, there's about six to seven people involved in closing a deal and even upwards of 20 in larger enterprise deals as well. Deal cycles have, of course, in turn um, lengthened because of this, and budgets have been even tighter, especially post-COVID, and 58% of B2B teams have seen um, budgets stay flat or even reduced uh, in 2023. So lots of things to consider there. Now, when we think about what AI can do, there's definitely a lot of benefits, of course, as it can um, you know, increase productivity across the board, you know, looking at ways where can we automate, especially when it comes to marketing messaging or maybe outbound or, or inbound messaging, you can get very specific and actually create um, much more um, personalized outreach. And I think as salespeople, we've all seen it, you know, there is so much noise out there and it is really, it's just gotten harder, I found, to send out a message that is actually going to get the attention of the reader in their inbox. People are busy. Um, you know, there's just, again, so many emails that we have to sort through. And so being able to uh, personalize where you can is going to be so important. And thankfully, with AI tools, you can actually leverage these to your advantage um, and actually spend more time going after maybe some specific accounts rather than hitting everybody with the same message. But personalization is always going to be key. Um, I've always been a big proponent of that, and I've seen a lot of success wherever you can personalize your message. Um, and then in terms of how our buyers have changed, obviously millennials and Gen Z are slowly taking over the folks that are actually in buying positions now. In fact, they make up about 64% of all B2B buyers today. And these younger generations do prefer to do their own research. I mean, I can't tell you how many times we've received demo requests or gotten a call with somebody, and it seems like they've really done their homework before we ever even have a conver conversation with them. So about 43% of your buyers are going to prefer a rep-free experience. And 90% of those younger buyers cite somewhat of a dissatisfaction with vendors versus only 71% of buyers from you know older generations. By 2025, more than a third of B2B purchases are actually going to be um, occurring through self-guided channels. So people just doing their own research, um, going through um, references from maybe people they know. Again, online reviews are huge as well. So what do we do as sellers when it feels like there's, you know, Maybe things aren't looking so great for us. There's a lot outside of our control. It can feel very, very overwhelming. And I can speak from personal experience as I've seen, you know, definitely a lot of things change in the space, whether I was, you know, BDR or, you know, account executive or even leading my sales team. You really do have to think about, you know, ways that you can adapt. And one thing that I've always wanted to put a focus on, regardless of where my role has been in a sales perspective, whether I'm an individual contributor or a leader, I always want to focus on what I can control and separate that from what I call an uncontrollable. So let's define those first. An uncontrollable is anything that our prospects or our customers say and do. Some examples would be whether or not they decide to answer the phone when you call them or respond to your email or even open that email, whether they are logging into LinkedIn to see your message, um, their timeline their buying process. Like we mentioned earlier, a lot more people are involved now. Um, there's not a whole lot we can do about that. So 
you know, I would put that under the bucket of an uncontrollable. Any organizational changes, if you've been in sales long enough, you know how frustrating it is when you've been working on a deal, you've had great rapport with your um, client, and then they leave the company, or maybe they've been let go, or something happens to where you start to lose some of that traction. It is, you know, it's never fun, but it is something that, you know, it, it can happen. Um, other things as well, like we talked about economic restraints, when COVID happened and everybody was on a, um, you know, purchasing freeze. And now what we're seeing where, you know, buyers again are becoming younger um, and the messaging that we have to send out now has to change. We don't have a lot of control whether or not somebody, again, layoffs, uh, purchasing freezes, things like that. Again, we can't control the finances of our clients that we're speaking with. But now let's focus on what we can control. Controllable, I define it as anything that we say and do, anything that we can change. And regardless of what's happening in the economic um, you know, world, we are always able to be prepared. We're always able to have a really consistent follow through. I think a lot of the reasons why you know, people maybe don't have a great experience going through a salesperson to purchase something is maybe they're not getting the follow through. Um, maybe they don't feel like that sales rep is really hearing their concerns. So being an attentive listener, you know, following through, if you say you're going to send something, you know, definitely send it and being really prepared are great ways to definitely instill that confidence into the buyer. Um, your delivery, your work ethic, your attitude on the calls, these are all things that are 100% within your control, regardless of what's happening, you know, the world around you, um, you are able to set the tone for each call that you have with your prospect. You're also able to you know, be mindful of your delivery and your motive. I always um, kind of point to my team and we, we have these conversations and you hear a sales question from person. Our buyers are getting younger. You know, I think they're more aware of those salesy type questions. So you really want to think what's the motive behind a question that you're asking in the sales process? Are you actually trying to help and add value to the prospect? Or are you just looking to help yourself? You know, and you ask sort of um, one-sided questions where you know, I just want to gather information with a prospect, but you're not actually providing any value to them back. Prospects feel that and they, they, you know, I don't think they appreciate it. And so you want to be mindful of, hey, I want to make sure that my prospect feels when they leave this call that they are, are cared for, their, um, their concerns are, you know, addressed and, and really listened to and, and really understood. A, a really good way to do this is just lead with curiosity. Again, I've been at Allbound for a while now. And it's very easy, um, I think, for any sales rep to kind of get in a routine, get into a little bit of a rut of you've gone through, you know, 100 discovery calls and they start to start, they, you know, begin to feel the same a little bit. But if you lead with curiosity and you practice genuine interest at each interaction, that is going to completely change the dynamic of the sales process. That person is now going to feel like, you actually care what they have to say. You're interested in their unique business problems. And you're asking questions that, you know, you'd only be able to ask if you were being an attentive listener. Hey, you mentioned you have 100 partners. How many of those partners are really active? Tell me what that looks like today. Um, I know there's a lot of back and forth on having scripted questions or guidelines. Um, there's difference of opinions out there for sure. But I always found it's, it works best if you follow your intuition and your curiosity. Kind of put yourself in the mindset of, hey, if I'm talking to a friend I haven't spoken to in a while or I'm meeting somebody new, I try to have a similar dialogue. Um, and so you're not going to just, in a normal, natural conversation with a person, just ask them question after question after question um, to gather information. You want to build upon that conversation. So really being curious and trust in your intuition. I think as long as your framework is good, um, it's okay to go off script. Um, how you lead a sales interaction should be a reflection of you. Now, when I first started, um, I didn't really figure out what my sales voice was, and I was kind of copying off of what I saw my um, other team members do. But you want to make sure that how you're wording things, how you are answering questions is a reflection of how you actually talk, um, because it will again come off more genuine. Again, your delivery tone is just as important as the words that you use. Um, I think that kind of goes without saying, but you would be surprised at how much different of an outcome you'll get 
depending on the energy kind of in your voice and in your um, your body language, even though we have very limited of that on Zoom. Um, and then, of course, if a, somebody asks you a question, the natural reaction is just to answer. But I always like to slow that down. And if they say, hey, what is your pricing? Follow that up with maybe what does your budget look like? And really get them to explain more rather than jumping into answering the question. Why is that question important to you? Let's talk about that more. I'm interested. Um, but lastly, I think everything comes down to the mindset of just being indifferent. Before I was in B2B sales, I did sell uh, internet door-to-door. -door. That teaches you a lot about how to be indifferent on any outcome. You want to treat everybody with confidence and care, regardless if you feel like they're a great fit or a poor fit. Um, everybody deserves that level of respect and care in the process. You know, Don't be afraid to walk away from something if it is a poor fit. I think when you're more confident in doing so, it actually uh, gives a lot of builds a lot of trust with you and your prospect. Um, and of course, don't let the uncontrollables affect your attitude and your work ethic. You, um, you know, are in control of those things of how hard you're going to put in for that day or that week and what your attitude will look like. So if you just lost a deal or maybe you just got a really unfortunate email that your champion has left the company and now you kind of have to start from scratch, don't let that affect your next discovery call from somebody that hasn't even met you yet. Um, and on the flip side of that, if you get really great news, hey, we're really excited, we're going to buy all down or whatever the case may be, um, still being diligent, following through your steps, follow through your that repeatable process until it's signed, sealed and delivered. Um, you know, you never want to over celebrate before anything is is totally complete and kind of just assume that the worst, you know, the worst case is a possible scenario. So if you go in assuming, hey. This person could not show up on my call. Maybe they're going to tell me they don't have budget. Whatever it is, be prepared for that, but have, you know, hoping for the best but just being prepared for whatever comes your way is a really great way to kind of, you want to stay even keel in sales. Everyone's heard it. Sales is a roller coaster, but the more um, indifferent you can be, you will start to see that consistency across quarter over quarter and year over year. Um and last thing I would say is never, ever depend on your prospect to follow through on what they're going to say. It is your job to hold them accountable. It's your job to remind them about meetings. It's your job to maintain, making sure those meetings are attended and they're kind of doing their their side of the bargain as well. Um, they're looking to you to guide them. And so, you know, don't take that lightly. It, it really is um, a privilege. And as we see more and more AI kind of um, seep into our our day-to-day -day in sales, just remember that you know, you as a human, you are unique and don't be afraid to, you know, express that in your sales process.